Hi witches! Welcome back to my channel. Um, and today we're going to be talking all about solar magic! Yay! Um, now on my channel I feel like I have historically talked about the moon a lot, but I don't want to ignore or kind of like shift focus away from one of the most beautiful celestial objects in our sky, the sun. Now, since time immemorial, um, the sun has been super important to us as human beings and especially to ancient people. Now, in the 21st century, we may not be as like uh, dependent upon it, but you know, hopefully we can start solar powering things. Um, but the ancient people really relied on the sun to, you know, grow food, to stay warm. Um, and it was really just the source of like heat and light and life. Um, there were temples and structures made in honor of the sun that date back to prehistory, um, one of which I've been like really like lucky to see and that is Stonehenge. And this is actually before I started practicing witchcraft so I didn't realize how significant it was until like recently where I'm just like oh my gosh I was like 11 years old looking at Stonehenge on the summer solstice that's so crazy like people have been did this thousands and thousands of years ago and because it was the summer solstice they were actually I don't know if they were allowing people to perform a ritual there like if you know they worked with a local coven or if they were doing a reenactment of like what that would look like but there were people in all of these beautiful costumes there was a man and a woman wearing white robes which leads me to believe that it was a Wiccan ceremony but I again this was 15 years ago so I have no idea um but it was just a really really beautiful moment and it really made me feel so connected to those ancient people and it was really beautiful to see um, you know something that was so old um, still be around and it, it was just a really incredible experience if you guys have been to Stonehenge um, let's chat about it in the comments down below but before I turn this into an entire video about monoliths um, let's move right along Historically, there are also lots of deities that are associated with the sun, some of which include Ra, Aten, Hathor, Horus, Sekhmet, Bast, Amaterasu, Mithra, Aina, Belenos, Brigid, Lu, Apollo, Helios, and Sol. Now those are simply a few of the deities that ex are in existence that are associated with the sun. So if there is some, if there's a deity that you work with that is not on that list, I did not ignore them purposely, but these are some of the more well-known ones that have associations with the sun. Now, as modern practitioners, we can connect with the sun in a similar way that we connect with the moon. And I wanted to share just a couple examples from my own personal practice of ways that I connect with the sun and I use it in my witchcraft and in, in my in my workings, right? Um, now, the first thing that I do recommend, of course, is sunbathing. And notice I did not say going out tanning, please protect your skin and wear sunscreen. But um, I really like sunbathing, just letting myself um, you know, absorb the energy from the sun. Obviously you are getting vitamin D from the sun. So there is a scientific reason that you feel better after sitting outside. Now, before I see any comments that are like, what do you mean you go sunbathing? You literally look like you haven't left a crypt in 5,000 years. Firstly, thank you. But um, I, I understand, but again, sunscreen, I use like 150 SPF. Yes, um, be safe, protect your bodies. Um, next, I recommend charging your crystals in sunlight. Now there is a caveat to this. Um, so yes, you absolutely can charge crystals in the sun. I especially love doing this with clear quartz. It is one of my favorites to use. I also really love using a citrine, but I did want to give like the disclaimer that you should be careful with certain crystals because I have had crystals fade from leaving them in a sunny window for too long. And granted, I left it there for like months um but i did notice like color fading and stuff so just be sure that you are keeping your crystals out of the sun for long periods of time however in the short term if you are looking to kind of charge up your crystals um with a little bit of extra fiery expansive energy um definitely leaving them out in the sun to charge um is is a great idea something i do all the time now i personally see the sun's energy as very expansive it really reminds me of that element of fire so using fire magic um, in tandem with solar magic or maybe to represent the sun in your practice um, is a fantastic way to connect with the celestial um, body without um, you know having to work directly with it. Now, the next thing that I wanted to talk about actually ironically is making solar water. So similar to the way that we can charge water in moonlight and have the moon's energies kind of transferred into that vessel. So, so we can do the same thing with the sun, right? Now, personally, I use solar 
Solar Water the same way that I would use Moon Water in terms of like mechanics within spell work. Um, and one of the my favorite methods of using Solar Water is to like actually drink it. So I will energize it, I will charge it with energy, um, and oftentimes I will make sun tea. Now there is again another disclaimer, please do not give yourself botulism. There is a slight chance that if you leave, um, you know, water out in the sun too long with herbs and sugars and stuff in it, um, you can create super gross bacteria. So please be careful and just like don't leave things in the sun for too long is kind of I guess the lesson of this video. Um, but making sun tea is a really great way to mix together not only earth magic, um, but water magic and fire magic even if you're considering the sun as like that element of fire. And finally, I find that the availability of the sun actually really informs how I practice and the types of magic I am practicing. Um, so in the summertime when there is a lot more sunlight, I feel way more expansive. Um, obviously it is a lot warmer, there's a lot more energy flying around, um, but I, I just, I feel so much more expansive, so much more energetic. Um, so I, I tend to do much bigger workings, I feel like, during the summertime than I do in the wintertime, which I think is pretty evident, like, on my channel as you look back. Um, whereas in the winter, I'm definitely a lot more introverted. I'm doing a lot more personal workings, like personal development workings, whereas in the summertime, I'm a little bit more like, let me help all of my friends. Let me just do a million things all at once. Um, so yes, that's kind of how I use the sun, I guess, to inform my practice or to track my practice. And I, I kind of recognized this last year. Um, so this year, it's been really cool to like confirm my, I guess, suspicions about all of that um, and just validate that for myself. So that is how I use a solar magic in my personal practice. I hope this gave you some ideas on how to use this wonderful celestial body in your own, and I will see you guys next week. Bye!